Hello, I'm Dave. Welcome to my Technical Notes channel. In TechNote 81, I'll demonstrate the use of the hardware serial ports. For the demonstration, I'll use a standard NMEA GPS with a default speed of 9600 board and 8-bit no parity one-stop bit. And there's the data output from the device. The ESP32 has three UARTs, UART0, UART1 and UART2 universal asynchronous receiver transmitters. It's worth spending some time covering the UARTs, the hardware UARTs, because on nearly every board on the market, UART0 or 1 is assigned to device programming. So when you plug your USB port in, it's communicating with one of those UARTs, leaving one spare. On some boards, UART 1 is assigned to reading the flash memory where your program is stored. So UART 0 to your programming port, UART 1 to read-write to flash memory. And then UART 2 is uh, free for uh, project use. In common with all UARTs, the speed and protocol can be varied over a wide range. So just about every eventuality can be catered for. Some of the protocols employ parity, which is a simple error detecting mechanism. So here's two examples of sending the letter A over a serial link. The top one is using the 8N1, so that's 8-bit, no parity, one-stop bit. And you can see that it has a start bit. It normally marks itself as high state, goes low, that's the start bit. Then it goes high for bit zero. And then at bit 6, it goes high again, which is hexadecimal 4.1. Note that the data is sent what's called little endian, which means least significant bits or bytes first. And some other systems are big endian, which is the converse. In the second example, it's the same letter transmitted. Uh, it has two, two single high bits, so that's an odd number of bits. And But I've selected the odd parity so the parity bit gets set because it needs three high bits to get an odd parity result. This is the simple test program I'm using and that's been uploaded to GitHub. So just the things to note are that serial begin can then be followed by uh, conventionally the board rate, then the protocol, then the receive pin and then the transmit pin. So you can vary those to suit your needs. And there's two examples there. Here's a wiring diagram between a Lowland 32 board and the GPS module. The thing to note is that transmit data has to go to receive data and receive data to transmit data. So effectively the pins or the data lines need to be swapped over with serial devices. And all serial devices are like that. So in this example, I'm using the default pins of 16 and 17 for serial port 2. In this example, I've depicted that I've changed the definition in the software from 16 and 17 to 12 and 13, because nearly all the pins, with the exception of the four I listed earlier, can be used or reassigned to a serial port. So that gives you maximum flexibility. In summary, the use of hardware serial ports is more efficient than a software emulation like software serial. And the, those emulations usually use uh, interrupts and that creates a CPU overhead and that can slow your programs down or make the operation erratic. The hardware solutions generally operate at much faster speeds and uh, of course it doesn't need a library so that's usually a big advantage. Programs are generally easier to implement. You haven't got to worry about timings. And because it's a hardware device, it usually has a buffer. And so you reduce the loss, the probability of loss of data. And you get a versatile speed range and protocols. Overall, that is the uh, ESP32 serial port summary. I hope you found this technical note interesting and useful.